Elegant as adults and ruthless as larvae, Neuroptera treads the fine line between grace and brutality, which is great if they're on our side. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today we are talking about the order Neuroptera, containing the lacewings, antlions, mantid flies, and more. They're sometimes referred to as the net-winged insects, but more often just called Neuropterans. This is the first of three orders I'm covering within the Neuropterida, containing the Neuroptera, Megaloptera, and the Raphidioptera. Though they don't look it, the closest relative of these orders is actually the beetles, but I don't think you need to worry too much about getting them confused. The most distinctive trait of the Neuroptera are their heavily veined wings, and this trait gives them both their common name, the net-winged insects, as well as their scientific name. Neuro means nerve, and terra means wing, so neuroptera means nerve wings, as the heavy venation looks like branching nerves. They have an elongate body shape with chewing mouth parts, prominent antennae, and well-developed compound eyes. Neuropterans heavily vary in size, from the larger antlions and owl flies to the tiny little dusty wings which look like clumps of powdered sugar. The Neuroptera are holometabolous, meaning they have a complete four-stage metamorphosis from egg, to larvae, to pupae, to adult. Let's talk about their eggs for a second. While some Neuropterans lay generic whitish eggs on stems and leaves, others have a pretty unique calling card. The eggs of some antlions and lacewings will be suspended in the air on little hair-like stalks. And this helps to protect them from dangerous predators, such as ants, or predaceous hemipterans, or even other lacewing larvae. And yes, that includes their siblings. In nearly all Neuroptera, the larvae are predaceous, and look kind of terrifying. There are some exceptions to this rule. Cisiridae, or spongilla flies, feed on freshwater sponges as larvae. Although sponges are animals, so technically they're still carnivores, so maybe this isn't really an exception at all. But overall, Neuropteran larvae are ruthless. One famous example is antlion larvae. Spoilers, they live up to their name. Antlions are basically sarlaccs from Star Wars, digging pits where they bury themselves and wait for ants to fall in. And sometimes they'll try to actively speed up this process by flicking sand at the ants until it can grab them in its jaws and suck them of their juices. Some owl flies also ambush prey, but instead of forming pits, they'll hide in debris and grab passerbys. Most lacewings are a little more active in their approach and will patrol foliage for aphids or other small insects. While mantid fly larvae are known for preying on spider egg sacs, often hitching a ride on spiders it finds and crawling into the egg sac as it forms. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said Neuroptera and larvae are pretty ruthless. Adults, on the other hand, are a bit more tame. Many of the ferocious sarlacc antlions retire to a diet of pollen and nectar, along with many of the lacewings. Others continue their carnivorous ways, such as owl flies and mantid flies, until eventually they find a mate and they begin the cycle anew. Side note about Neuropteran larvae is they have to worry about predators too. Some species of lacewings carry plant fibers or lichens on their back to disguise themselves from predators, and some will even carry the dead corpses of their prey. Side side note, ants often defend colonies of aphids as if they're cattle. But studies found that lacewing larvae that pile dead aphids on their backs are less likely to be attacked by these ant bodyguards so even their predator defenses are hardcore. Overall, Neuropterans are a pretty dangerous looking bunch, but they pose no threat to us. They don't even bite or sting. On the contrary, they're a huge boon for our agricultural systems and gardens. Neuropterans are pretty amazing predators, and they provide great natural control for a whole host of agricultural pests. They love a good aphid buffet. Back in high school, I used to catch lacewing larvae and release them into my garden, and watch my aphid problem dwindle to near nothing in just a few days. While they can pollinate, the main benefit is definitely still that robust pest control they provide for our crops. And it's not just aphids. They can be found munching on white flies, scale insects, small caterpillars, 
caterpillar eggs, and more. And though we may think this lot can handle itself, they still need our help to conserve them. The best way to help our native Neuropterans is the planting of native plants, specifically native flowers. The adults feed on the nectar and pollen, but also it provides a great hunting ground for the larvae. Another way is to turn off your outdoor lights when you're not using them. It's not just moths that are attracted to lights, and many Neuropterans can be lured in by the glow of a porch light. This causes them to waste precious energy and also leaves them more vulnerable to predation. Besides, nobody likes light pollution anyway. That being said, if you're looking to see some Neuropterans up close, light sheeting, or better known as mothing, is a great way to do this. Get some friends together, hang up a white sheet, and see what flies onto it. It may take a while, but it's a great way to spend an evening. Mercury vapor lights work perfect for this. Just make sure when you're done to turn off the light. Thank you so much for listening, y'all, and if you enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with future orders. Also, if you have any favorite species in this group or any fun Neuroptera facts I didn't cover, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Peace, everyone.